I also wanted to talk about and mention the party I went to on Sunday. So, I said a lot about Hotbox London, and some of the things I said about Hotbox London on this podcast weren't the greatest, right? I was a little bit angry and frustrated that I was quote-unquote left on scene. I wasn't necessarily getting the response I needed to get from this invite-only, members-only type of close-knit, clicky party vibe that happens here in London that is on a sort of like need-to-know basis, right? And I really wanted to go. Eventually, I did get the response I needed, and then suddenly, of course, I acquiesced. Suddenly, I was a really nice guy, and I wanted to go in now. So, I managed to go on Sunday, and it's a weird one because I'm not usually a Sunday raver type of person. That's why I've avoided going to Unfold. It's this rave they do on Sundays at Fold, one of the best clubs here in London, and I kind of avoided it because it's on a Sunday, and I usually work on a Monday, and I'm usually tired, and I can't really do the whole Friday, Saturday, Sunday you know, flipping finger again. I can't do it. But I was fortunate this weekend, this past weekend, because I did the pirate stream. I did the whole live stream thing at Pirate on the Friday. I didn't go on a Saturday and I was able to go on a Sunday. So I was able to get a bit of a rest in between. So that was made a bit easier. Um, Hotbox itself, again, I'm not going to tell you or describe how to get in there, how to basically get an invite, because I think part of the hassle and the aggro of getting there is actually what makes when you finally do get in there somewhat satisfying. So I'm not going to spoil that side of things. So if you do want to go there and you want to find out a way to get there, you're going to work out yourself. But I worked it out. I, I managed to get my ticket. I was happy to go. And when I got the ticket, I realized, oh shit, it's actually quite a long rave because they were doing it from Sunday at 12 p.m. all the way to 12 a.m. So it's a proper 12-hour rave. And obviously in London, because we have really draconian old school stuck in the fucking mud um laws around licensing when it comes to drinks and club opening hours there is no real way to sort of have that long kind of berlin-esque kind of you know club night where you can go out from friday until sunday so what people are doing now if you're a promoter to be a little bit clever people are doing these sort of like kind of daytime into nighttime raves so you can get more time out of it and also i'd imagine from being a former promoter i'd imagine that the Sundays are usually days that not a lot of people book places for. So you have a better option of getting more interesting spaces. You can do more with them. Um, and obviously, you know, it's a Sunday, so you can probably squeeze as much as you can out of it. So it started at 12, ended at 12. Obviously, I wasn't going to go there at 12. That's ridiculous. So I left my house around 4. I got there about 6, whatever. Um, and I was able to get there and have a good time. And it was quite good as well, because what I realized was that because I left quite early at that 6 p.m., I wasn't keen to like start pre-drinking super early i went there um popped into a local fucking chicken shop got myself some hot wings and a chicken burger and then i got myself a little magnum and i was on i was on the way there bopping listening to some music on the way to the club and really well fed lined my stomach had a little bit of a drink and then was able to go in so i wasn't even kind of steaming as i probably would have been in previous times when i leave the house at fucking 11 so i rocked up there and as soon as i rocked up to um hot box the first thing i realized was that oh these guys and girls right these guys and girls are really serious about this whole like selection thing right they don't play around so as soon as i rocked up um the person at the door kind of you know gave me the once over um kind of it was the first time i think i've had a vibe of somebody actually door selecting and that's something or door picking whatever the kind of term is which basically involves the bouncers kind of figuring out if you're the right person for the rave if you match what they're doing it's sort of come something that's sort of like been popularized a lot obviously in the berlin scene where they don't really care if you have money um and you can pay to go in if they don't like the cut of your jib they're not going to let you in sort of vibe and i guess even with this party even though it's an invite invite even though it's a members only type of need to know thing so you have to kind of be in the know to get a ticket it's still a place where if they see you rock up and you have the wrong vibe they're going to tell you to go home and give you a refund they're not on that kind of vibe so it's quite refreshing to see them take that kind of approach to it so um they sort of gave me the once over made sure i wasn't a fucking psycho let me in and then as soon as I walked through the door and I was able to get through the kind of the first ticket to kind of scan my ticket stuff and I kind of saw everybody in a sort of main sort of area vibe wise where it was where everyone was sort of sitting down, I immediately realized why they go to that, you know, why there's such a ball leg to deal with in terms of getting tickets. It made sense because the vibe in there was immaculate. Maybe one of the best atmospheres I've kind of walked into in terms of a London club in a very, very long time. Loads of different people, different races, colors and creeds, sizes, orientations, whatever it may be, expressions. Everyone was just, just having a blast in their own little kind of bubbles. And I think those are usually a good examples or good kind of scenarios of like good club situations where everyone's kind of having their own little bit of fun, their own little pockets of fun. They're not really trying to chase anything. They're all just there having their own little situations. And I guess the space itself, 
made for it as well. I think it was like a community center type of place. I'm not really sure what it was. Um, it was somewhere in South London. Again, location will not be specific on it because I think it's important if you are going to go to go in there as blind as I did. So it was somewhere in South London and the location was like some sort of community center or something along those kind of lines. So it had like a really nice open plan sort of like area where you would probably sit down to do like your dinners and stuff. And it was kind of like a circle. So people were sitting there on the edges and on the inside. And then on the outside, there'll be like a little cloakroom area. And then on the right hand side, there was a bar that was really fairly cheap also, to be honest. Um, a lot of these DIY events, I'm not too sure if you guys have been there before, um, but a lot of DIY events, sometimes especially in London, they're a piss take because people will put on an event in the warehouse. They'll buy drinks from a fucking supermarket and then they'll sell them to you for £10 a, a tin. So they'll buy fucking supermarket tins of beer, like probably 20 packs for like $20, and then they'll sell you one tin for $10. So it was quite nice to go to a space where it was like a community center type of place and they had community center type of prices because I think I paid, I got like a double whiskey with no ice for like six pounds, which again, isn't the cheapest, but still for a, a London club, it was still really, really cheap. So that was pretty decent. And then once I got my drink, I headed inside and I love the fact that, again, I'm, you know, I love that kind of like, um, it's sort of like a movie scene when you go into some sort of club sometimes. I think it kind of adds to the sort of a law. So if I'm not mistaken, you go through these two black doors to this black corridor, through another set of black doors. And as, me as soon as you open the black doors into the, into the dance floor, you just met with this wave of sound, like boom, 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 super, super loud. And you can't even see the DJ booth. That's how crazy packed it was. People were like climbing over the, over on top of each other, on side of the walls, rolling on the floors, jumping up and down and you couldn't see the DJ booth. And I think for me, having been out often to a lot of these places, I think not seeing the DJ booth at a rave sometimes is a good identification, a good identifier, sorry, identifier of a good party because usually when people are at parties where it's like all about the dj and they're the celebrity they're all just standing there looking at the person like they're at a gig and it could be a bit of a weird atmosphere but at this place similar to some of the best raves i've been to everyone was sort of like facing other directions i like back to the dj booth facing the wall looking at their friends just having a good time and by the time i realized where the booth was i was like oh shit everyone's just going for it going crazy and then another sign of where i knew i was in the right space was when i was standing at the back um at the in the little boomer corner, right? Because that's why I'm always am. I'm always in the corner at a little boomer corner, right? Just standing there trying to act like I'm not a fucking undercover fed and I'm not a fucking creep, right? I just stand in the back of the boomer. I just stand in the back of the boomer corner. I took off my jacket and I put it on the side of the railings and I was touching the walls. And as I went to touch the walls, the whole wall was fucking wet. It was dripping. That's how you know you're in a good party. The wall was fucking perspirating. It was full of sweat, full of people's man juices. I'm sure a lot of guys' man juices as well, but I don't give a fuck. And that, to me, was the antithesis of where I was at. Okay, I'm at a really good party. The sound is going crazy. Hardly anyone's wearing fucking clothes. The walls are fucking leaking, and it's absolutely going off. And I absolutely loved every single minute of it. And I honestly... um can understand now why these guys make such a big deal out of making sure only a certain group of people are allowed to go to their party because jesus christ mate when i went in there i finally understood oh now i get why you guys are such a fucking hassle to deal with and why you make it such a pain in the ass to let people like myself get in there and i can also understand from their point of view um why maybe letting in someone like myself um although i think i'm quite plugged in could be a sign that your party is about to go down right because i'm i'm a little bit of a, a techno npc or i'm a little bit of a techno normie so maybe when i'm starting to arrive at your rave that might mean oh shit your rave is about to go down because i'm kind of you know part of the normie population that wants to kind of come to your parties but i'm really happy and fortunate no i'm really happy and grateful that i was given the opportunity to go and have a good time and party there and i really really can say that that was legitimately one of if not the best parties i've been to in london in a very 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 long time and i really do recommend anybody um who kind of wants to come to london and wants to go to party this type of place i think they do it every single month or something to go there and another thing i also thought about I was listening to, or I think I remember reading an interview before um, of one of the founders of Hotbox um, called Becky Strook, who's also a DJ there. And I remember she mentioned something like, oh, she was around when 
you know, house warehouse parties in Hackney were a big thing. The things I used to go to also, and I used to DJ at them sometimes back in the day. And she was mentioning how, like, you know, she came from that scene of always being groped and being abused and assaulted and just being creeped out in these parties at these warehouse raves in Hackney Wick. And now I understand why they have that approach because I also remember that era of these great house parties or these great warehouse parties in Hackney Wick in these sort of like East London warehouses and shit. They were amazing vibes, but they did invite a really weird mix of people, like vagabonds, you know what I mean? Like people that were basically, um, what would you call them? I wouldn't even call them homeless. People that were like unhoused, like these unhoused type of guys that lived in forests and shit, they'd come into the raves and they fucking, it'd be a weird mix of people. You'd have all these rave kids, you'd have all these area boys, you'd have all these unhoused people, you'd have the dealers. It was just a bit, it was too, too toxic really. So I understand why she probably came from that environment and decided, hey, when I do my own party, I wanted to have that kind of, you know, sort of like rough around the edges DIY vibe that those warehouse parties had. But also I want it to be a space where people can be safe. You're never going to have a safe space in London or in any sort of nightlife scene. I think the whole safe space idea is really dumb because it's nightlife. You're going to always have creeps and monsters out at night. And I think like most of our parents were right when we were growing up, like nothing really good happens at night after 9 p.m. anyway. So you're always going to open yourself up to being in those sort of environments. But what you can do, you can create environments where you sort of mitigate around that. You can't completely eradicate it, but you can create environments where you can make sure that the dickheads are being encouraged and one thing i remember seeing at hotbox which they did really well they had all these kind of um they had these guys and girls walking around on the dance floor with um pink high vest jackets on um being like you know wellness or something something whatever it may be and they were basically walking around and making sure everyone was chill everyone was cool they weren't being super intrusive but just they were always kind of around you could kind of feel them here and there just kind of making sure everyone was nice everyone was kind of cool and i think that kind of added to the atmosphere and of course just in general everyone in there was just really nice um i didn't meet what dickhead in there everyone was open to talk and have a good chat and just hang out and i really didn't enjoy the vibe I enjoyed the vibe so much so that I put together a little interview, actually, um, interviewing some people on the dance floor about their experience and how they liked it. And I'm going to play a few of the clips here of some of my, um, you know, on the dance floor journalism. What, what's, what's the appeal of this? Why do you like it so much? It's the freedom. There's no judgment. Everyone is here to have a good time. And they don't let idiots in. And how do you think they keep the idiots out? How is it possible? Because you know London. It's full of idiots. It's mostly members only and we have a really good doors now in London. It's really that simple. Good door picking and good security. Okay, now you next up. For your first time here. Yes. What do you like about it so far? I like a physical mix of spaces. You have a really good space here, on the dance floor, several spaces to sit inside and you have the bar area. And I need all of them of spaces for different points of my life. And that means I can relax and I can stay for longer and enjoy every part of the night. A good chill out area is a good, is a important. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, good to know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Another reason why I like this space is that it's wheelchair accessible with an accessible toilet, which means you can get everybody in. It's really important to be inclusive like this, otherwise you're just kind of posing. Uh, yeah, so it, it, it's actually accessible to everybody. Yes. Yeah, 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 like for real, like not, not just like uh, lip service. Great point, fucking fantastic point. How do you think you're to different nights out as an outsider? Honestly, I have to say like, it's, it's worth the hassle of getting the like secret word and all that malarkey, it's worth the hassle. So, what makes this so special, this place? Party-wise. Personally. What makes this special? Uh, Hold on, sorry, a bad question. You know how London is, there's lots of parties on. Yeah. Why do you bother coming out for this? Why do you make the effort to come out on the Sunday for this? Hot Box is a whole other class on its own. Like, it's completely different. This is a space where you can, well, it's Halloween weekend. And as you can hear, people are our demons. We are dancing out our traumas, our inner shadows. This is a place where you can come and be yourself, even when it's ugly. And then last question, what separates this from like a, 
a midnight unfold, why is this like a level above? Or is it the same for you? Uh, yeah, this, uh, it's about authenticity. This place here is not ah. trying to do anything or be okay. or what. And yeah, big up everybody who I spoke to in there who were able to lend me their ear and I could basically annoy them on the dance floor with a couple of those questions. Um, one of them was obviously a couple that I spoke to, these two gay guys who are really nice. And then at the end, there was a young lady there that I was able to speak to. And as you can see from the lack of pictures and shit, um, they do go out of their way to make sure that they cover your phone camera with a sticker before you go in there. So it's similar to the whole Berlin vibe. Um, but they do really stress that you're not allowed to do any videos, not to take any pictures on the dance floor so the fact that i was able to get away with a couple of voice memo interviews was a big deal so i didn't want to kind of you know overstep the mark and do anything too crazy so i thought i just kind of get an overall kind of vibe of what was getting in there was from some of the opinions that you kind of heard from the people there on the dance floor live and direct so big up everybody in there that was able to kind of you know let me their ear and whatnot but i do think the next time that i go um because they make such a big deal out of not using your phone and you know embracing the kind of you know immersing yourself in the environment i think i may do something similar um, um, to what they do at fucking Bergheim and just leave my phone in my pocket and not use it. Um, there were people obviously using their phone because you can use them, um, but you're not just not allowed to take any pictures of yourself. Like you can obviously record little Instagram stories and stuff. They do fucking um, share... They do um, share videos and clips of people on Instagram, on their Instagram stories from the dance floor. So obviously you can share stories and stuff, but you're just not allowed to take any pictures of people in there and stuff or whatever and not kind of, you know, expose them or whatever it may be uh, in that kind of vibe. So that was kind of a nice thing to see. But I think as a challenge, as I've done previously when I've been to other places, as a challenge to myself, I think I may just do the whole like not touching my phone thing because sometimes I feel like in those places, touching your phone sometimes can be a bit of a, it can be a little bit of a way to, for you to like avoid feeling awkward or not feeling too comfortable in a space, you sort of like go to your safe space and touching your phone and checking your social media, going on your fucking apps, checking who's messaging you, uploading something on Instagram, all that sort of stuff can be a crux to not really let you to kind of immerse yourself in the situation and the environment. And really, it can sometimes take away from the benefits of why that thing is in place. Because the whole point of those sticker things is to make people kind of be a little bit more present and i think london especially needs it more than anything right you need to be able to be present in these spaces to really enjoy them and to make everybody else around you feel more comfortable but you know it's it's odd like i said because it's in some parts in some ways some places encourage it because like i said if you go on the you know on the hot box instagram on the day of the event they will reshare and repost pictures and clips of people posting videos and whatnot from the dance floor obviously with the camera blacked out so it's kind of like a weird situation because you're covering people's cameras but then you're also kind of encouraging the behavior by sharing some of the pictures and images on your instagram so it's a kind of a strange thing but overall that aside, I think they do a really good job of making sure the people that go to the events are a good bunch and they are the ones that help to kind of make the vibe what it is. And I think I've mentioned it prior on previous times, I think that the most important thing in parties or the most important thing in most places actually is the community that goes there. It really isn't the sound system. It really isn't the DJs that you book. It really isn't the club space itself. It really is the people that go there. And if the people are go that going to your party, unfortunately, if you attract a group of wankers, there's no other way you can really fix that apart from ending the party and starting again, really. So the fact that they do such a good job at making sure they have a real lack of wankers on the dance floor is a really big deal, especially when you consider the, the, the areas of interest their fans and their ravers come from, you know, fashion, art, creative, sort of side of things. There is a high um, percentage of people from that scene who can be deemed to be a little bit up their own ass and a bit wankery. But I didn't meet one cunt, one wanker when I was out there. Everybody was fucking sound, had a great time. Um, I left there about 11 p 11.30 at night. I went to catch the last train home because obviously it was in like South London. So if I left there after 12, it would mean I have to get the night service. And that kind of makes it a bit tricky for me to get back to where I live. So I left um, obviously before 12 and I got home at a decent hour and I kind of understood the, the Sunday raving. It's a bit mad. 
don't get me wrong, it's a bit crazy to be going out from like 12 to 12. Um, obviously, I, got, I didn't get there for 12. I got there about 6, 7 p.m. But I understand it because you can technically get that 12-hour sort of hit that you need instead of going to Berlin. You can basically do that sort of thing in London. And also, raving on a Sunday kind of reminds me of what ha used to happen back in the day when a lot of my friends would put on raves and parties between Mondays and Thursdays because that was a good time because you kind of avoided the weekend warrior crowds and you could also sometimes find cooler more interesting spaces to hire for cheaper because it was like a weekday and usually those days weren't in demand um and usually you'd have a way funner time because it'd be a really small concentrated group of people who were there for the right reason so i think the whole sunday thing is a big big um plus for the whole london scene obviously it's annoying because it's only come about because we don't really have the ability to rave normally quote unquote like other major cities like berlin do throughout the friday all the way to sunday or whatever maybe not a lot of places have 24-hour licenses blah 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 but in a way to kind of get around it doing the whole sunday thing from 12 to 12 is great you can you can go to bed and still kind of wake up early enough in the morning to get to work in the monday it's pretty decent so i'm really a big fan of it and i recommend anybody that's into the type of music that i like and you're in london and you want to go somewhere a little bit more interesting a little bit more cool and you're maybe a bit fed up of going to fold every week like i am even though fold's one of our best clubs in london i just went somewhere a little bit different to kind of freshen things up a bit because i feel like going to the same place all the time anyway can be a bit naff i really recommend you check out um hotbox it really was legitimately one of the best parties i've been to in london and i honestly can't wait to go back again and the fact that they do it only once a month as well kind of makes it a little bit something to look forward to um and obviously like i said before for me the next challenge when i do go there is to go there and really immerse myself and be on the dance floor because the whole entire time i was standing on the fucking boomer corner just watching and kind of observing from afar but the next challenge for when i do go is to be on the dance floor tops off and absolutely going for it like everybody else that was there so i'm really 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 am i'm thankful that i was able to go and i can't wait to go again 